Hi, and welcome to another training demo by SQLAzureTutorials.com. Today, our topic of discussion is SQL joins foreign and primary keys with SQL Azure. So um, before we uh, dig deeper, some of the key terms to uh, kind of get us going. Uh, the term relationship is really an association between tables. Uh, entity relationship diagram, also known as ERD, uh, really shows the database structure with table relations between them. Um, a primary key, which is definitely critical to understanding any of these uh, features, is really a field that can serve as a unique identifier in a table. So for example, if you have a customer uh, table, you could possibly use a customer ID field as a unique identifier. Similarly, uh, let's say you, if you go to a medical clinic, they will typically ask you for a social security. So in that patient table, your social security would be considered a primary key. Now related to primary key, we also have a foreign key or FK. This is really a field in a child table that stores related info from a parent table. So a good example to understand this is that let's say, um, customer ID and uh, we will talk about the colors in a second here uh, as, as probably doesn't make sense but uh, regardless the customer ID in an orders table which will be a child table uh, would be considered a foreign key and this uh, basically points back to the customer ID in the customer table okay and then finally uh, joins are necessary to uh, bring all of this uh, related data together. So um, here's uh, here's a little bit uh, a structure diagram of the two tables that we're talking about. We have the customers table, and actually I'm uh, I will try to zoom. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit uh, better here. Okay, so on the left side, uh, you will notice that we have customers table. This is what we consider a parent table without this information, the secondary information will not exist. Uh, in other words, you cannot place orders for a customer. So the customer has to come first as uh, in a database. So that is why it's known as essentially a parent table. Uh, highlighted in the red rectangle is the primary key for this table. This is a customer ID. Now, if we move on to uh, the right, we have the secondary or the child table. Okay, this is the orders table and you'll notice also highlighted in red is the order ID, which uh, is the primary key for this table. But uh, then next you will notice uh, two blue rectangles. Okay, so the first one is customer ID. This is what we were mentioning a second ago. This is considered a foreign key in this table as it points back to this information, okay, in the primary, in the, in the parent table. And again, uh, we don't have another table showing here, but uh, you can see that the employee ID in the orders table will, uh, in, in a similar fashion, point back to the primary key in the employee table, okay? So um, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, explains uh, a little bit better what we are trying to achieve here. Um, now, as for as us in SQL Azure, I mean, how do you create primary and foreign keys? Okay, if you have an on-premise database, and for those of us uh, that have been working with a SQL Server for a while, this is fairly easy to do. You can uh, essentially use uh, multiple number of tools. You can use uh, SQL Server Management Studio, which is also SSMS to create primary key, foreign keys. Uh, you could even, uh, you know, do this and um, create a database diagram and do it within that. You can use other tools, but in SQL Azure, uh, so far, uh, you know, you have limited capability uh, to do that. I believe there are some third-party tools that will be coming out, but for the most part, if you want to create um, uh, primary foreign keys, you have to use uh, Transact SQL or T-SQL to do that, okay? Uh, you know, the basic syntax for this is going to be, uh, you're going to have to use an alter table statement, table name, then uh, the keyword add constraint, the constraint name, and then decide, obviously, if you're creating a primary or foreign key. So that's a little bit of uh, discussion on this. I'm actually going to go ahead and switch over to um, uh, essentially a management studio I am using. Uh, um, local uh, management studio, but I will connect to my SQL Azure database in the cloud. So let me go ahead and do that next.
and so now I am connected to my server if I expand my databases I do have two separate databases in here uh, in my sales database is where I have uh, these tables and so like I mentioned I have the customers table if I look at uh, the structure in here uh, like I mentioned I already have I did create a customer uh, uh, ID and set it as the primary key but that's you know that is the one uh, in here notice we do not have a foreign key now for the second table which which is the orders table uh, I do not have any primary key or foreign keys uh, set in here yet I simply have uh, you know the proper uh, fields and whatnot uh, so you'll notice that the customer ID it's an N and char 5 uh, by the way when you're making these relationships I did not point but the primary key uh, data type has to match the foreign key data type okay uh, otherwise it will uh, simply not work so as far as um, how do we actually create uh, you know some of these objects I have actually uh, saved uh, some of these uh, SQL scripts so uh, let me take a look at these first um, so the primary table which you know in our case like I mentioned is um, actually yeah, it's it's I think I have a slight slow connection here but um, in our case this is the customers table uh, like I said and if you were to uh, if, if I didn't do this I could have uh, created this by using an alter table command like I said the table name uh, do the add constraint keyword and then as far as the name typically uh, this is the way I like to do it uh, you're free to uh, you know follow your own um, uh, scheme of things I guess but I like to go if it's a primary key I like to go PK uh, the actual table name which is customers and then the field name okay and then obviously you want to say primary key clustered since it is going to be a clustered index and then finally um, the actual field so I mean if I try to do this now it's actually going to give me an error because it already has uh, a primary key in there if you wanted to drop the constraint you will simply do an alter table uh, customers and then do a drop constraint and um, I don't think it will let me do that because <clears throat> essentially in SQL Azure if you're not familiar with this you do need a clustered index uh, essentially in every table um, and this has to do with you know high availability and scalability uh, in the Microsoft data centers okay so that that was basically uh, the primary table uh, we will be creating um, these objects in the secondary table so let me go ahead and do that I am going to let me actually go ahead and minimize this so now secondary table remember is going to be the orders table okay um, every customer uh, at least you hope you know in, in, in a perfect world that they do place some orders and you know buy some of your stuff but um, regardless uh, we are going to go ahead and add a primary key first and again uh, you know this code should look somewhat familiar to you so let me go ahead and add this constraint okay um, all right so I think I probably have in uh, I also have a looks like I think I have a, another constraint in here I thought I didn't have um, let me just quickly check this I thought I had removed uh, indexes but maybe oh, okay maybe I have this index down here okay so let me see if I can try to delete it that probably will give me an error but um, yeah okay so it's it's giving me an error but anyway regardless um, what what uh, you would have done is you could have added a constraint doing this and I think um, I, it won't uh, it won't let me drop it so that's fine I will actually keep going and come down to the foreign key part which let me just double check to make sure there are no foreign key constraints on this okay so I don't have any foreign key constraints on my orders table so we can definitely do this um, the command again is alter table simply the table name then you will use the key phrase add constraint uh, and again you know this time we are going to use an FK orders customers since those are the two tables that are involved okay customer ID